begin. My mom is an art teacher. Now, in the greater Seattle area, admission to many museums is free the first Thursday of every month. Because of these two things, I've been to the Seattle Art Museum more times than you can shake a paintbrush at. I love art, especially paintings, and as you may have guessed, my favorite painting is Vincent Van Gogh's The Starry Night. Today, I'm going to show you how to paint three elements of The Starry Night. The swirl, the moon, and the tree. The first element will be the swirl in the sky, during which I'll explain Van Gogh's art style. The second element will be the moon. I'll tell you a bit about Van Gogh himself while I paint the moon, and the final element will be the cypress tree. I'll analyze this specific painting while I paint the tree. So, let's get started. As you can see, the rest of the sky is pre-painted, using lots of short, layered brush strokes of color. For this big swirl, I'll be using the same technique. Impressionism began in the 1860s, when painters such as Edward Monet, along with Renoir, Monet, Degas, and Cezanne, began the Impressionist movement. The camera had been around for about 40 years by that time, and began to displace realistic portraits. The camera was faster, the camera was more accurate, the focus of the Impressionist movement, however, was not about accuracy. Degas said that it is all very well to copy what one sees, but it is far better to draw what one now sees only in one's memory. Van Gogh's memory may have been recalling the swirl of the Milky Way that he saw on a dark night, and this collaborated with his imagination. As an Impressionist, he would try to capture the feeling of this memory, and the feeling of seeing the Milky Way tumble through the galaxy is well captured by the Impressionist style. Cezanne once said that when you go out to paint, you should try to forget what object you have before you, be it a field, a tree, a house, or whatever. Merely think, here is a little square of blue, here an oblong of pink, here a streak of yellow, and paint it just as it looks to you, the exact color and shape, until it emerges as your own naive impression of the scene before you. I think this style of art is beautiful, but art critics of the time thought it was ridiculous. One of the critics, Louis Leroy, actually said impression. Wallpaper in its embryonic state is more finished. <laughs> Which pretty much sums up what the general public thought of this revolutionary art style. Now, to paint the moon, you're just going to use the same technique you used for the sky, but you need to flick your wrist a bit more to give a rounder brush stroke. While I'm working on this, let me tell you a little bit about Vincent Van Gogh. Van Gogh was a minister's son. He tried several vocations and finally decided to become a painter when he was 27. Throughout his life, Van Gogh combated depression, anxiety, and some say bipolar disorder. In 1888, for example, Van Gogh cut off his own ear after threatening his friend with a knife in a fit of dementia. He was hospitalized and finally he decided to paint a portrait of his doctor to thank him. Dr. Ray, however, did not like the painting and actually used it to patch a chicken coop before finally just giving it away. Poor choice on his part, as that painting is now estimated to be worth $50 million. Now that I've gotten a few more strokes on the moon, you can see that they, by being curved, create the impression of radiating light. Shortly after the ear incident, Van Gogh admitted himself to an asylum in St. Remy for a year. Fluctuating between periods of madness and creativity, he created some of his best paintings, and The Starry Night was one of them. On July 27, 1890, just a few short months after he left the asylum, Van Gogh sustained a gunshot wound and died two days later. It's unknown whether this was self-inflicted or if someone else accidentally shot him and he was covering for them. That is an unknown mystery from his life. So, we've painted the swirl, we've painted the moon. Let's look at the tree. The tree is a little bit different to paint. It serves as a bridge from the earth to the sky, a bridge your vision can walk upon. It merges the solidity of the earth and the motion of the sky by using long brush strokes. These draw your eye upward. Now, if you look at this painting, and I mean really, really look, you might notice a few different things. One thing you might notice is how something so simple as just the relationship between the tree and church steeple creates depth and adds just a hint of reality to this otherwise whimsical painting. Or you might notice that this big swirl in the sky, though it might on first glance appear like a burst of frenzied brushwork, is actually centered above the vanishing point, which is 
just fancy art terminology for the place towards which everything shrinks and eventually disappears. Now you can see how these long brush strokes draw your eye upward, leading from the quiet town to what I think is the focal point of this painting, the vibrant sky. What I hope you can go away with today is the knowledge that by using short brush strokes, you can achieve the impressionist technique. In fact, short brush strokes did most of the work for us today. They created motion in the swirl, radiant light around the moon, and they lined up in the tree to point us to the sky. Short brush strokes are half of the impressionist technique. The other half, observation, imagination, and practice. Lots of practice. The best part is that the act of painting in and of itself has immeasurable value. That's why art therapists do what they do. They help people paint because it's been proven to reduce stress and anxiety, even if you're not a master. And I think that's why Van Gogh tended to leave bits of his canvases bare, because he loved the process far more than some perfect end product. As he once said, if you hear a voice within you say, you cannot paint, then by all means paint, and that voice will be silenced. Thank you. Thank you so much for